Hello, how are you? I'm Steph Golby. For the last couple of weeks, I've been recording Keys to Breakthrough with God, and I'm continuing that series today. And this week, I'm looking at a bit of a different one. I'm looking at a key to breakthrough with God is failing upwards. And how this came about is the other evening when I was at my church, I was talking about prophecy and I just stood up and I was just encouraging people to prophesy and out of my mouth, like I wasn't planning on saying it at all, just came these words, we need to learn to fail upwards and I was just sharing, that was my experience. When I started learning to prophesy, I just failed all the time but as I was failing, I was learning, I was failing upwards. So that's what I mean by failing upwards. I mean having a go, getting it wrong, and learning from that mistake. Failing upwards. And failing is such a necessary part of progress. But we hate it. <laughs> we hate it so much. We all want to start like out here, but we have to start at the beginning. It's like a kid learning to ride a bike. The kid hops on the bike, they fall off, but they learn from falling off. So they get back up, hop back on again, fall off again, but they keep on learning. And every time they fall off, they learn, and then they get better and better and better until they can finally do it, which is awesome. And that's what failing upwards is, is learning. Learning from our mistakes. And we see this with the disciple Peter in the Bible. Peter learnt by failing. He learnt uh, this. He failed so much. Peter was this bold, courageous disciple. And he would get up and he would have a go. And he would completely tank so many times. One time, Peter rebuked Jesus. He told Jesus that he would not die on the cross. It's not a good day when you rebuke God. Another time, Jesus says to Peter, Hey Peter, I'm just letting you know, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter goes to Jesus, No, 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 no. I will not. Everyone else might, but not me. I will definitely not do that. And what happens? Peter fails and denies Jesus three times. Just as Jesus said, a massive fail, like an epic fail. Hey, that's an epic fail. But Peter keeps on learning. He keeps on pressing in and he keeps on growing from his mistakes. And eventually he gets it right. In Acts 2, when the Holy Spirit falls, Peter was the first one to stand up and to, to deliver this incredible message. And that day, 3,000 people came to know Jesus Christ. It's so awesome. And when Peter was failing with Jesus, what Peter was doing is he was learning to receive grace. That's what he was doing. Learning to receive grace. And Peter, he gets grace. He gets grace. And God's grace for us is greater than our every failure. I love that. God's grace for us is greater than our every failure. It's just so incredible. There's this scene in John 21. This is after Jesus has died on the cross, after Peter has denied Jesus, and after Jesus has been resurrected. The disciples are in the boat and Peter sees Jesus and he jumps into the water to get to Jesus. And there's this incredible scene in uh, John 21 when Peter comes to Jesus and from his three massive failings, his three denials of Jesus, Jesus commissions Peter instead. These three denials, Jesus commissions Peter for every one of them. Incredible grace, just such grace that Jesus has towards Peter in his failings. I absolutely love it. It's, it's incredible. It's grace. And the other thing I love about this story, I absolutely love about this story, 
is Peter's response to his failing. Because in our humanness and in our brokenness, when we stuff up, we want to run away. We want to hide in shame and embarrassment. But not Peter. The Bible says that Peter was the first one off the boat. He throws himself into the water to get to Jesus. He's not ashamed or embarrassed because he gets grace. He gets grace. And he swims to Jesus runs to Jesus and Jesus receives him in his open arms and gives him grace and just loves on him. That's who Jesus is. So if you've been stuffing up in this season, because it is it's a season of stress and season of pressure, which means we make mistakes. We get things wrong. But there's so much grace for you. We can just run into our daddy God's arms. We can run to Jesus and we can just sit with him and he's like, it's okay. There's so much grace for that. There's so much grace for that failing. There's so much grace for that mistake. I've got it all under control. I love this. God is so good. He is so good. He can turn anything around for our good. I just want to encourage you with that. For any failing or mistake you have made, he can turn it around. He's the God of divine turnarounds. That's who he is. The God of the impossible. This gracious, merciful God that loves you and works all things out for your good. And we see this in the story of Joseph, hey? In that story, Joseph's brothers out of a heart of envy, jealousy and bitterness throw Joseph in a pit and sell him. Like, that's a bad day. <laughs> that's a big mistake. That is a bad day. But God, but God, that's the words, but God. But God, in his grace and mercy, turns it around. He brings good for Joseph, and he brings good for his brothers. That's who God is. He's the God of second chances, the God of grace, and the God of mercy. He wants to lavish it upon you. I just really want to encourage some people today and just say that is what God wants to do for you. It's to lavish his grace upon you and mercy even when you fail, even when you stuff up. And he even wants you to learn from those mistakes because there's so much grace for you and you can just fail upwards, fail upwards in his loving arms knowing that he's going to look after you, he's going to look after your children, he's going to look after everything and work it out for your good. So I hope this blesses you today.